All right, it's January 8th, 2013. This is the enclosure that I'm putting together out of PVC for uh, flood coolant control on the Tormach. Uh, I'm doing this just about as cheap as I can with uh, PVC. Putting the pieces together still. Uh, I need to assemble the back and when the, the back goes together then the uh, the main rail I guess I could call it here will get connected because that's, that's actually going to this point will connect to the rail in the back somewhere in this area. Whole idea here being I'm going to increase the flood coolant flow and I don't feel like having a bigger mess in the uh, shop here than I already have. So calling it quits for tonight and tomorrow I will continue on with a third evening of working on this. Almost done though. It's January 8th, 2013, and I'm looking at the uh, modification to my previous, I guess, setup for the uh, computer workstation here. Use some scrap wood, actually, stuff I had laying around from other projects to uh, put together this stand so that I don't have to have the uh, miserable arrangement I had previously. So this should be a lot more usable. One thing you notice right here is some PVC cement, and that's because I'm also putting together an extremely inexpensive enclosure for the Tormach. It's in the early stages right now. Uh, the design is complete. I'm pretty satisfied with that layout. It's just in the early stages of building right now. All PVC uh, shower curtains. I'll explain more about the uh, detail of the design later, perhaps, uh, but Essentially, it's just a uh, framework that the shower curtains will hang from so that when the flood coolant system gets upgraded, I don't have to worry about coolant going all over the place, which was a problem with the uh, original flood coolant system on the Tormach, depending on how you have the uh, nozzle pointed at the cutter, etc. So that's it. Oh, and one thing of note, I decided when I took the... Uh, uh, chip guard off from around the table that the x-axis stepper motor would probably need some protection from coolant so I set up a aluminum cover plate that uh, will ser serve dual purposes as a tool tray and um, be able to keep the coolant off of the uh, off the servo at least from hitting our stepper at least from hitting it directly it's January 9th, 2013, and I'm wrapping up the framing of the PVC enclosure for the Tormach. I have two joints left to glue. These connections right up here on both sides. I'm actually letting the glue at that joint set a little bit more because there's going to be a little bit of a preload. Uh, twisting preload at that location will be twisted uh, downward to sort of uh, help support a little bit the uh, weight of the shower curtain that's going to be hanging over here. I don't expect much. I just wanted to be sure that wanted to be sure that I preloaded it in the right direction and didn't preload it in the wrong direction. So that was really my attempt there. So so far it's taken me uh, let's see seven 10 foot sticks of three quarter inch schedule 40 PVC. I bought eight just in case. So there's my remaining uh, 10 foot stick and this is the leftovers that I didn't use. The long piece there is the uh, 1 inch Schedule 40 PVC that is making up the uh, main uh, shower curtain bar across the middle there. I wanted something a little larger, larger cross section so it dealt with the, uh, uh, the load on it a little bit better. Basically this is uh, uh, a structure that is designed to hold shower curtains from this point back to this corner all the way across to there forward and then over to this corner so that makes three shower curtains with a little bit to spare there'll be a fourth shower curtain that's suspended uh, by rings from here to there the shower curtains around the perimeter will be held on by essentially what's a 
D-ring binder clip that are loose. I forget what the term is exactly, but uh, those will hold the shower curtains in place around the outside. Shower curtains will hang down past this seam all the way around so that there's no uh, no way coolant can work its way out of that section, uh, minimizing the number of gaps where the uh, coolant can come through. Uh, nothing special about the details. I am impressed with the way that I got to fit. It uh, fits on the mill pretty well, pretty tightly. Uh, I guess tight isn't really a great term. Uh, it lines up with the, uh, the lines on the shelf on the, uh, what do they call this thing? The chip tray. That's the term I'm looking for. So it's about 8 inches wide, a little less, and about 38 inches front to back. And then the main section here is 36 inches high or so. Maybe it's more like 34 or something, but pretty close to that. Whole idea with this shower curtain section, I thought about putting doors on there, but that was uh, a lot more complicated as far as small pieces and fabricating something that would work as a hinge. Didn't seem like it was worth it time-wise, uh, but I still need something that would cover the front and allow me to open the uh, uh, the uh, door to the drawbar. Uh, one of the mistakes I made when purchasing the mill was not getting a power drawbar, a manual drawbar, and I needed to be sure that I could still get the uh, the door open so I could uh, uh, perform tool changes without any issue there. Now I tried to design it with future modifications in mind, in other words tool changer and the uh, power drawbar and I can't think of anything, I've seen enough videos uh, I can't think of anything that would interfere here. Now the coolant system that I'm going to do next, which is the reason why I'm doing this enclosure, uh, may have some issues with uh, planning. Um, I plan on putting the tool changer which connects to these uh, uh, these bolts right here. The coolant will come up the backside and through. I think I'm going to bypass this uh, port right there uh, for the sake of, again, uh, protecting from leaks and the area isn't necessary to use. The, the place underneath where the coolant tank is kept isn't going to be used anymore for anything except coolant return, so there's no reason to have it. That's basically it. Let me back up and get a better perspective here. And then end the video. Before I wrap this up completely, I realized there were a couple details that I wasn't including. First of all, the shower curtains, uh, when they come down the side here, my, my plan is to retain them to the uh, tray with some magnets along the uh, along the base, so that we don't end up with any sort of uh, I don't know that would blow around, but there'd be uh, something that would cause it to move, uh, coolant splashing or whatever. I don't want to. I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to have magnets around the base. Uh, ceramic, ceramic magnets will probably do the trick. And then the perhaps the most important detail that I haven't included yet. See the painter's tape, the blue painter's tape holding the PVC frame in place. That's only temporary for the sake of uh, holding this while I uh, built it. But the plan is to use a zip tie around the tube and then the zip tie will pass through a base that has a, a double stick tape backing on it that I can stick down to the frame in a few places. It'll probably take eight or ten uh, to do that. Maybe a dozen or fifteen, I don't know. It won't take that many. Uh, I've, I've got them already from another project and the uh, uh, that will retain it. I thought about using double stick tape to put the PVC directly to the uh, chip tray, but I realized pretty quickly that that wouldn't be very beneficial from a uh, from the perspective of removing this uh, uh, housing or the enclosure. I guess is a better better term. You just clip the zip ties the way I've got it planned, and then it comes right off the base. And then if you don't want to uh, have the uh, the uh, the plastic bases on there that the zip ties go through, you can just scrape off the adhesive, and then uh, you have essentially. Uh, uh, a mill enclosure or mill chip tray as uh, brought to you uh, by Tormach without any modifications to it, which is always uh, preferred in my opinion. So that's it. I'm on to uh, picking up shower curtains now and finishing up the task. It's January 10th, 
2013 and I'm just wrapping up the completion of the project putting the coolant enclosure with a PVC frame on the mill. Uh, really the only new details here are the <clears throat> pardon me the uh, the front curtain here which is uh, 5 mil clear vinyl and then I also put a cover uh, something extremely simple it's just basically the bottom of this uh, um, shower curtain that I cut off and hung up over the front of it and held it in place with magnets nothing spectacular there I was just sure that I didn't cover up any of the important features like the uh, fan so that's it you can still access the uh, main power switch and the emergency switch and you can operate all the uh, switches right through the plastic so anything that you need to do it's uh, not as pleasant I suppose as touching the switch directly but it works well enough now it's on to the flood coolant modification here so that we no longer have a system capable of flowing uh, 55 gallons per hour out the hose and then a, sorry out the nozzle uh, that's included with the Tormach or 100 gallons per hour uh, flowing out the end of the hose so we can uh, move on to that project next and get that started it's January 13th 2013 I'm in the garage just finished up uh, the coolant system modifications I, uh, I guess I shouldn't say finished up because I have a couple steps left, uh, which I'll get to in just a moment, but it involves the uh, tank right here. The flood cooling improvement, since I took the time to put this enclosure on, basically I wanted to have three nozzles, and that's what I've uh, developed here using half inch PVC. The uh, brass fittings you see sticking out the bottom are the adapters for the nozzles when they come in. Haven't ordered them yet. I figure I'll get them from McMaster uh, place to order today. Should be in in a couple days and then I'll uh, set them up then. Uh, the position is uh, going to actually be closer than the Tormach nozzle. So in other words, the uh, Tormach nozzle is a one foot total length. And this one will actually be uh, I'm planning on getting one foot total length nozzles, but the Tormach nozzle was mounted right about here and then had to bend down and around. Here I'm starting much closer and it doesn't have to bend down where it's already pointed downward. So I may have more, uh, more nozzle than I'm used to having or more nozzle than necessary, but I'll be getting a pair of pliers so I can separate and reconnect them as necessary. The, uh, all the supplies, three quarter inch, I wanted to, uh, uh, minimize any losses uh, trying to maximize flow or at least not limit my flow if I have uh, the need to cut back the flow on the flow I'll have uh, two of the ball valves this one will give me the option to shut off the two front ball valves if uh, or the two front nozzles if necessary and then the uh, one on the uh, back transfer tube allows me to shut off the coolant flow or regulate it uh, to all three nozzles so that's essentially it for the uh, the nozzle portion of it here I did check to be sure that the hose was going to work uh, in full travel in other words it wasn't going to uh, bind or pinch uh, as the uh, the head moves up and down uh, additionally I uh, wanted to be sure that it also wasn't going to contact the part when the head comes down that there wasn't going to be any contact the uh, the nose of the spindle is still about two inches below the uh, the worst case point there, and then I'll have a tool sticking at probably three and a half inches minimum out from the nose of that. Could be some tools that are shorter, but not by much, so it shouldn't be an issue. If it is, I'll plan as necessary. Also capped off the stock uh, pass through there for the coolant hose, and you see that the coolant tray, uh, the chip tray, uh, chip screen I guess is probably a better term for it. it isn't in place it will be going back into place I just have it out now for uh, the sake of video and I have what's essentially a uh, a bar sink strainer in the uh, in the well here I made a modification to it so I never have to worry about the uh, uh, the rubber stopper blocking the flow if it were to drop down in the thing didn't want to have to worry about that and still get the advantage of the chip collection there 
Now, uh, don't get too hung up on my tank here. The uh, at least the bottom portion, obviously, it's taped up. This is an old container. The uh, the actual one is right here. I haven't put it in yet because I don't have the pump. The uh, supply isn't connected because there's no pump yet. The uh, return is basically a strainer. I uh, shopped around several places for strainers that had. Uh, I was looking for something that was cheap. I didn't want to spend uh, eight or ten bucks on it, and I ended up doing exactly that because I wanted something that had a uh, very fine mesh in the screen. Probably would have been able to make my own uh, without issue, but decided against that for the sake of time. So this is just one and a half inch uh, drain. I just went with something that turned down the uh, coolant flow into the strainer. Now, inside the tank, this should give me the option to uh, take a look and fill as necessary. That's the way I've set it up here. Uh, the, uh, the hose, of course, on the inside. Now, this is uh, going to be in here later because this is just a, uh, a mock-up mock -up tank. Uh, the uh, I don't remember what I was saying exactly, but I'll keep going with it anyway. The uh, the drain pipe coming from underneath may not be sloping downhill quite as much as necessary, and if it a little coolant puddles in there, I don't imagine that that's going to be a problem. I've minimized my joints here with that coupler. Uh, if it does turn out to be a problem, I'll address it as necessary, uh, but I'm not expecting it to be. Uh, this is the actual tank that's going to go in there have repurposed from a uh, previous function and I essentially think that's it so the last I guess we're going on a week and a half now of modifications new uh, stand new workstation for the machine controller the full curtain system uh, and flood cooling improvement that should be it so the Tormach stuff the original equipment is uh, all bundled up and ready to be stored um, that's essentially it for the project. One thing I do plan on doing is actually taking the chip screen here. Well, when the chip screen was delivered to me, there was a small tear in the uh, uh, the metal screen, and it was mashed around pretty good. I re disassembled it, reassembled it as best I could, but I think I'm actually going to put a new section of screen in there, and I'm considering putting like a, uh, a fiber mat in there, similar to an air filter. Something that doesn't break down when it gets wet, of course, but the goal being to keep chips out of the uh, bottom of the coolant tank. The, uh, I was impressed with how many chips actually made it down into the, uh, into the tank when I was disassembling it yesterday and cleaning it up. So I have to do something about that. Additionally, there was some muck in there. It's been uh, a year and a half or so since I filled it with coolant for the first time and haven't op opened the tank since then. Quite a bit of oil gets down in there, so I, f I figured I'll uh, get some uh, oil pillows as well. In fact, I may not be able to see it here, but there's some oil on the surface of this. It's been strained a little bit, but these are the small particles that have been uh, that have made it out of the strainer. So that's it for now. Here's one other detail worth discussing. There's an opening in the bottom of the mill head, um, part of a casting, original casting feature that uh, I'm not sure the purpose of it, but I plan on covering this up. The uh, with the flood coolant flow rate increasing, probably be worthwhile. I found that if I reach back inside that with my finger, I can get quite a few chips out. So um, there's definitely some coolant, uh, coolant and chip flow that's going back into that area. So my plan is to actually make a small uh, plate that covers it. The uh, dimensions I believe are something like 65 uh, millimeters by 98, 97 and a half, something like that between the uh, uh, the bolt hole center to center. The uh, They are already threaded even though they didn't look like it originally. I, thought, I was sure that they weren't threaded judging by the way it looked but once I cleaned them out and ran a tap in there to clean it clean it up, sure enough it was a uh, it was a uh, threaded well the uh, uh, solution I came up with was rubber gasket material. It looks like it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick or so. Uh, get some rubber gasket material. I'll trim that out and then put it in between the uh, plate that I put up there and the head. The reason why 
felt like the gasket material was necessary was because the the surface is not flat. It's an as cast surface, so there's no reason to believe that it would anything that I put on there would sit flat or uh, be uh, reasonably good at sealing. I'm not concerned about anything flowing in there. I'm just trying to minimize it. If it were a uh, a flatter surface like the side, I probably wouldn't have an issue with it. But being where it is, it's definitely a uh, uh, on smooth, smooth surface, probably a variation of a sixteenth of an inch or so across the, the whole width of it. So I figured I might as well give it my best shot here. <laughs> 